You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it's time to view some volatility. It is time for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting Options Insider Radio Network. Welcome to all of you. Welcome to new and old. A lot of newcomers coming in, which we love to see. Keep the keep the blood pumping. Keep always discovering. Where I just discovered this show. Where where has it been? And I always say to them, "Where have you been? It's been running for <laughs> forever." But uh, it's a great. We love all the new blood. You guys know how to check it out. If you are indeed new, of course, there's the website that has uh, the archives as well as the mobile app. Best places to go really deep uh, with those, and you get everything obviously uh, on the app. Most of it on the website. We have to truncate it a little bit just to keep them breaking our site with 11 years worth of content. You can always, of course, subscribe to it in your platform of choice, your iTunes, your, your Pocket Cast, whatever you like to use. We don't judge. Or, or of course, you can join us live every uh, Friday, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern, to view some volatility. We get into some all sorts of good. You never know who's going to be on the show, what we're going to talk about. It's always a fun romp through the world of volatility. And of course, however you listen, live after the fact, hit us up. Questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom we do indeed like to hear from you guys. And speaking of journey, let's see who we got. On the old Vol Views panel today, oh, it's a return. It's a return. He hasn't been on this show, at least in a little while. He is uh, the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew G. From the land of the pit of options. Mr. G, welcome back to the program, sir. It is a pleasure to be here. I even have my mic working, and I and I really am trying to be as, as, as with it as I actually possibly can. So, you know, you, you know... There are limits to that. Obviously. Wow. Oh, you're, wow. Uh, with it, Andrew. We got a, a pledge of with itness for the show. I'm very, I'm um, very excited by this. So that means you've highlighted the mute button. You know where it is. Uh, it's painted in red with a big sticker that says mute. <laughs> so, you know, it's, exactly. it's, it's, it's blinky and flashy. Oh, I like it. Upgraded, um, upgraded to yeah. a blinky flashy. Uh, yeah. light. That's, that's probably good. A little visual, a little visual reminder is never the worst thing. All right, then let's get to it. It's time for our volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Volatility the Review, this portion of the show where we go, we go hunt some vol. We're like vol hunters on this show. We go out, look far afield to find where that elusive vol is hiding. These days, it's becoming quite a challenge. Vol's getting, getting quite elusive out there. It's hiding in the bush. It's running away. Whenever you look at it, just it scampers off into the shadows. It doesn't want to be found. The volatility, it's, it's a fickle creature, and these days, it's kind of scared. As we're seeing a little bit of a mix, it started off the day more mixed. Now we're seeing most of the markets pretty much tending into the green. Uh, like I said, we're recording this stream in it live a little bit past noon central here. With most of the major indices up about a quarter of a percent, a little bit less or so, except for the tech-heavy Nasdaq. Uh, that's pretty much unched on the day. Remember yesterday's session, we saw a lot of weird 
mixed stuff going on. We saw the Dow rally. We saw the S&P kind of unched. We saw the NASDAQ taking it on the chin. So it's kind of a, where do you want to play? Which sector do you want to play? And it was a different story uh, from a vol perspective and from an underlying perspective. Today, still mixed, but uh, not quite as extreme, of course. We'll see. The day is still young. Anything that could happen here. All of this kind of wishy washiness here on the street means that with the with the bias towards the upside means VIX actually uh, not actually selling off, but was rallying more earlier in the day. We got uh, VIX cash got as high as oh, about 1331 today. So about a little more than a handle north of where it is right now. Like I mentioned, that vol is elusive. If you are one of the vol hunters out there, and I know you are legion, <laughs> then you know it's been hard to find of late. It had a brief, brief glimmer this morning. It popped its head out of the hole and then scampered right back like the groundhog on Groundhog's Day. So now we're about a handle lower than that, a little more than that, actually. We're at about 1221 here, uh, kicking off the show in VIX Cash. So Val had a brief, brief moment in the sun this morning, and then it went away. Mr. Rock Lobster, it's been kind of that kind of week, you know? It's been it's been kind of kind of crazy. Like I mentioned, we had the bifurcation yesterday, or maybe trifurcation, because you had all the indices going in different directions. <laughs> you know, you had uh, Val kind of, it's been popping out and retreating kind of all week long. Long. It's been a weird dance. Uh, what's been what's been catching your eye out in the vol space this week, sir, and today? Well, there's several things that happened this week. Um, one is I think we had, I don't know if it was a low settlement, but I think we had a low settlement for the year VIX at 12.12 on Wednesday. So that was one. So we actually had a, what I would call a zone one settlement. Uh oh, zone one settlement. Oh, did, did the alerts go lower, off? Were, were there, a lower area. Were there buzzers flashing in option um, HQ? Was it oh, zone one? Zone one alert, red lights flashing, run to the bunker, that sort of thing? There was. It was it was mostly just a good reason to to get rid of a couple of uh, a couple of long vol puts. Um, um, you know, like VXX puts and stuff like that. But what that does is it sets up it sets up other trades. There's a lot of good contango trades and stuff like that. But also, it just is a just you know, volatility tends to have a little bit of a memory short term. So you print low vol and it could get back there again. So I think part of the tug that you saw yesterday was the economic news is really good. The U.S. is like there's these jobs reports. You know, we have more jobs than we have people. To me, that sounds like you need immigrants. <laughs> so without being too political, we're creating more jobs than we have people for. Um, note note to self, I think we need some immigrants or we need somebody here. Um, but the other thing with that is, is, you know, that's all like pretty bullish economic stuff. And that the SPX likes that, let's say. Um, and then on top of that, you have you know, uh, Trump going to Paris and, um, you know, making, uh, you know, making trade noise and the trade, you know, I think the algos really don't like the trade noise stuff. It gets them all, um, it, it gets them, uh, happy and vol buying S. So, you know, they bid up, you know, puts in the SPX and stuff like that. So you had, I think, you know, it's one thing people are buying stocks because the economic news is good, but then they're buying vol because of, you know, trying to play that short-term trade war thing, um, which has been, you know, you have to you have to admit, 2018 in trade war news has been generated a lot of vol, and it's it's not generating the same that it was before. So I think those are the two sort of cross currents um, that we're pushing the numbers around. Um, but as of today, and then today, it's like, okay, we're worried, and then nothing happens. And then when nothing happens, VIX comes down again, and, you know, we're not at 1170 closing like we were a day or two ago, but it's certainly not moving up either. So it's without any real action, um, there isn't enough to move it, you know, at least move it substantially one way or the other. So, and, and here we sit. Just kind of looking at things and going, hmm, what's happening? So, I think from a from a vol point of view, you know, how hard are they going to sell it into this G7 weekend? Right now, the thing I would expect though is you don't have anything happening, um, you know, some sort of hedge fly or something like that because they're going to crush all the short-term vol for next week. Um, 
I was just looking at some flies and stuff uh, with a couple of clients uh, earlier this morning, trying, or thinking about anyway, trying to price that before, um, you know, the show. So is it, are they, are those trades available? You might have to, you know, hedge a little bit, but even if the G7 summit goes well, are we going to really take off to the races? So I think you could see a little bit of vol droppage if the summit is, you know, ends up being sort of a benign love fest, which let's, let's face it. Um, everybody goes into these things with really low expectations. And then um, the news isn't bad enough to really drive the market down. And I think, you know, normally into a Friday, you don't see VIX having a bid whatsoever. Right. Um, and that's what we have right now. A benign love fest. Has, has, has anything, anything Trump's been involved with, like politically, ever been described as a benign love fest? Maybe. Never. Maybe, maybe I've missed a few, <laughs> but I think that goes along the lines of the uh, Trump ain't a single digit VIX president is one of these lines you can, you can kind of set your hat by until, uh, or set your clock by until, of course, it isn't like it was last year. Uh, with uh, with uh, Trump. By the way, Andrew, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're you're joining me on the show today because I, I thought of you earlier this week uh, when we were we were doing some some data mining uh, in the Google search area. And I was going to save us for later in the show, but it, it, you kind of inspired me because we have a lot of data here. We're going to talk about in a minute about trends for VIX and volatility in terms of what people are what the trends been like uh, over the last decade or so from a broad search interest. Uh, but before we get to that, our question of the week, actually. Mr. Rock Lobster right now. You'll like this one. Uh, it has a little bit of something for you in it. Uh, we asked, because you said we were doing some of this analysis this week, and we said Google Trends full of interesting and surprising data. When you analyze the option search data, you uncover some very surprising results, which brings us to this week's question. Which subregion, a.k.a. which state, that's how Google calls them, they call them subregion, don't ask me why, is currently ranked number one for overall options interest by Google? And we gave them four choices, Mr. Rock Lobster. We gave them Illinois. California, New York, or Maine? <laughs> See, you may or may not have inspired that choice there. That's all I'm going to say. So I'll let you mull that one over for a little bit if you want to give your answer later in the show. It's a challenging one, uh, but I'll let you... So is it, per, is it per capita or just in general? That's the weird thing. You, know, you, you might think, looking at that first off, you'd think, oh, it's the, which area has the most searches for, in this case, options, right? Just generic options. Uh, but it's not actually. It's it's per capita. It's by vol It's by population. So wow. if uh, if there's a thousand searches for options in California, it's going to count lower than if it's in Maine, right? Uh, right. So it's something to keep in mind as you're doing your analysis. That's all I'm going to say. I I, I might just have to go right with the, my home, my state right you gotta now. Got to go. Got to be a homer. I'm going huh? go, to jump off a cliff right away. You got to be a homer. Well. I will reveal the also it's, 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 the poll goes for the rest of the time. People are still voting, but uh, I will reveal the answer at the end of the show. About that, let people vote for the next hour or so. Uh, the answer may be indeed surprise many of you. I know it surprised me <laughs> when I saw it. I said, "Oh, that's um, interesting." So uh, we shall get. To, I'll leave that as a little bit of a teaser. But since we're speaking of uh, of this type of data, Mister Rock Lobster, we took that analysis and extended it, of course, because it's a volatility show to the world of volatility. And we started off kind of uh, we started off kind of down the rabbit hole a little bit. Let's search by product. So uh, let's we search for VIX, the old VIX. Uh, we all know VIX has been around forever, and its modern incarnation is a little bit newer. But actually, this data, this chart, kind of corresponds with it because uh, Google Trends data only goes back to about 2004, which is kind of uh, the heyday of the modern VIX that we all know and love today. So that the charts actually line up pretty well. And I'm looking at this chart over time here, Mr. Rock Lobster. And uh, you probably looked at the notes, so maybe you have an idea. But if you had a guess, because they kind of they kind of rank these charts in a very interesting way. They rank it as like the highest, most interest data point is 100. And then everything else is some, you know, percentage of that, 50, 75. Uh, so where would you guess? If you had a guess from January 2004 until today, where do you think is the high point in that time frame of the most Google search interest in VIX in like recorded history? If you had to pick a day. Uh, uh um, what was it? February. What was the Volpocalypse? So that was February. Um, that was from 2004. So I, I had to say like February 12th or 13th. Um, it, it was, right around there. It was, it, it, was, time. it was February 5th, <laughs> 20, uh, 2018. Actually, I don't have the I have the chart in front of me. I can't click on it right now, so I can't. But it is that fifth or sixth. Maybe it's the day later, or but it's right Whatever in that there. Day it's was, right there. I think yeah. it was like I, I, 
So I can't see if it's I, exactly I the day or like a day later here on this chart. I'll have to go look another one because this is this is not clickable. This version. It, was, it would be the day after, right? Because nobody cared about it during the day. It's that all also possible. they all look, walked in. And like, oh wow, XIV is down like fifty bucks. I should buy it, and then it went to zero. You know, so that was I'll, the try worst pull, part I'll try to pull up a thing. live clickable version <laughs> of this chart while we're doing it here. Really quick, give me. Oh, two seconds, and I'll give you the exact day. Here we go. All right, yes, clickable versions are always better. So, yes, that exact day was, oh, you know, they do it by month. They don't, they don't show a day here. So it is February. It's not showing me the exact day. Right. But, uh, it, but, it it is, is, but it's high and above anything else. Oh, yeah, yeah, but orders of magnitude. And, like, you know, yeah. if you had to guess another another year that was roughly 75% of that, uh, just, let's guess a, a, a time frame in a year. I'll, I'll let you go that. You don't have to guess exact day. Right. I, I would say the uh, that Euro crisis, like 2011, or that was it October 2010, right around then. Um, that that would be the last like big vol period. I think that everybody was freaking out about. Not bad. Aug 2011. Mem remember this? That's a pretty good guess. But remember, there's one data point that goes higher. Actually, there are, one's equal, but the one that's higher. You can probably guess this one pretty easy. What you, oh, actually, that was well, the flash two. crash two years ago? There's two. There's two. The May flash crash is also right about the same level of that uh, of that thing, which, are, by the way, both of them are about 60, uh, 60% of what it was in February, just to give you a frame of reference. So uh, <laughs> so just how, how much interest there was in VIX. Granted, the vol market has grown more people know what the hell VIX is now than they did back in 2010, obviously. By so. the way, I have closet. I have closet. I have a closet theory about the volpocalypse now oh do you did you hear our show a couple of weeks ago where uh we had uh, we were analyzing the article from uh from ft where we said pretty much or well, we didn't say the article the author said that I mean, we talked about what's driving away all the vix futures right and uh, we talked about how xiv and he kind of postulated this just just no one wants to get long vix futures anymore there's no love for long vix that's what he was saying that's what's killing it all but and, and that's what he thought was <laughs> exacerbated all that madness but anyway go ahead what's your theory sir i i i, I think <laughs> There's no products anywhere selling VIX anymore. I think that's a problem. Um, I, I'm I'm thinking that somehow, um, with the amount of money that I heard moved into it, I think I think that it's possible that somebody engineered a squeeze on those products somehow. Um, I'm not quite sure how, but it it's almost too convenient that there was the products were like massively short, you know. They were, engineered they were, a squeeze in VIX itself? And uh, not in the cash. I don't think they no, not, could have been obviously done. Obviously not in but the I cash, think but yeah. Somebody squeezed by buying the futures. By the futures, up really. And creating a, um, you know, I think they created them a cascade. Some, them some deep pockets if they, could, if they could pull off such a thing. Well, I'm thinking maybe somebody figured out that for every level that you pushed, because and this is kind of the thing is, because the vol futures were actually so low for, you know, and is it by by buying futures actively or kind of pressing um, it, it might have pressed. The, they could have started a cascade in the vault and those short vol products. Um, and I'm not sure if I, you know, I might just be totally, you know, because I'm still when you think about it, you know, was there enough? We've seen those vol products sort of, you know, move up and down before. I mean, <laughs> move up and down. But we've seen some pretty good gyrations, but not enough to drive them out. And I'm just wondering if there was something, there was a line that was crossed and the assets under management was so big that somebody figured out, well, if we can just kind of get the ball rolling, they're going to have to start to buy themselves. They're going to eat themselves up by trying to cover so you think um, it was it was kind of like that vol feedback loop everyone was talking about. This is like the proverbial pebble on the app that starts the avalanche, right? And right. Then a couple so let's say, it. yeah, five years ago, let's say if they have fifty million dollars under management, right? Probably not enough to do it. But you know, how big of the assets under management were these things in um, by February? You know, by late February, early Jan, we had that whole year, and everybody's like getting in the short vol trade, and it was the easy trade, and you know, all of a sudden the assets relative for the short position they got got really big, and maybe somebody did a calculation. Well, if we could just start kicking things on, and um, you know, and it just it, it it sounds too coincidental, and it's a little bit of a propeller, uh, you know, tinfoil hat theory, but I, I think there was a point I think where those 
the size of those two funds were getting pretty darn big. Um, and then I then I heard some scuttle about SVXY getting a half a billion dollar um, uh, investment. I think the week before the Volpocalypse. And it, it, whatever reason, it might have just upset the apple, car, apple cart enough. I haven't quite worked out the numbers yet. I'm just, um, I'm. This is just total. I have to say, total tinfoil hat land. I just, what I never could quite square is the market went down. I got it. There was some selling. I got it. That's happened before. But you know why this particular what I would call kind of ho hum news to drive the market far enough down. To sort of burst the bubble on, burst those vol products apart like that. It just, I mean, we've seen a lot worse news where the market doesn't drop near as much that did not do as much damage to those vol products. So I'm wondering if, you know, if it was, we finally did get to whatever across that feedback loop. So, you know, again, you, you know, you just sent, hat. you just sent all the zero hedge people into like a tailspin, you know, with, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're just, they're, they're just, they're typing away furiously right now. Uh, Rock Lobster says there is a conspiracy. Maybe have you been alone in Maine too long and your conspiratorial leanings getting the better uh, yeah. of you, sir? Is that, uh, you, you've been staring at a computer screen a little bit too long out there? You know, I, I can see what you're saying. I, I see like, you know, they're, there was maybe some sort of catalyst that ignited all that, right? Something, something was the tipping point, uh, whether it was just, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I, I did hear about that inflow uh, to SBXY and all the other things that were going on with that. So, yeah, maybe, you know, we're getting into some crazy tinfoil hat territory, sir. You know, we've, we've already done it a lot with uh, guests a couple of weeks ago with uh, manipulation of VIX and all this fun. It seems like you can't escape it in the vol space these days. You can't talk volatility without talking something fringe and crazy uh, on the you other have to end. Put your Where's the viceroy with the? I bet you he would have a really nice tinfoil hat. Where, where are you on the Bin Laden put, sir? Where, what's your theory <laughs> on that? Let's get into that. Let's get deep into that here on the show. That's, of course, the topic. Uh, surprisingly, a lot more debate about that recently than you might think. But that's a conversation uh, for another day. Let, let's finish up the, uh, our conversation here about uh, VIX historicals. If you had to pick a month in a year, that is, I'll give you a hint, Mr. Rock Lobster. It is, in terms of Google search data, it is probably 80%, 79% of that peak 100% mark in February. That's how much interest there was in VIX on this particular, in this, let's go month, month and year. Okay, one more time with a question, because beyond... Yeah, you, you, beyond, you, you sucked yourself beyond, down the, the VIX tinfoil rabbit hole here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull you back, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it's a hard thing. I got to reach down into the abyss here. But yeah, the 100 data point is the February 5th time frame, which is all the explosion of interest in ball. Right. This, the, on the Google Trends chart... This, this next data point is the next highest over the 11-year, or actually this is a 14-year period here. Uh, uh, and this is a month and a year, uh, which is about 80%, roughly 80% of the interest that there was in VIX on this particular day that there was back on February 5th. Oh, um, the only I can think of is the, like the fiscal cliff, something around that date. Uh, October uh, 2008, so it's all meltdown time. You know, the big, oh, the big, okay. all right, the all big, right. yeah. the big uh, palooza. Uh, time frame and the rest. The rest I totally is, forgot about that. Yeah, I was going to say you're missing. <laughs> you're missing the biggest, the biggest one of them all. You're, you're, you're to your credit, you're pulling out all this obscure stuff. You know, 20, all, all this euro crisis, but which is all good. But you know, the 2008 is like the no-brainer. The grandmother in Iowa would get that one, uh, but not the rock lobster. He goes deep, and he I, goes. I miss the easy stuff. That's my problem. I think. <laughs> Uh, let's look here really quickly. We did a similar. We dialed it back a little bit. We said, okay, maybe VIX is too far down the rabbit hole. Uh, let's look instead at interest in just a more broad and generic term, like something like volatility, which people would search for for a variety of capacities, not all financial. And you can also search for stock volatility. You don't have to search for it's not, op not all options uh, related. And uh, interesting uh, chart there as well. That one doesn't show the same kind of uh, – overall trend as as the VIX options does, which is kind of this weird one kind of data point in February is kind of just screwing up the whole chart. Or I'm sure with the VIX, the 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 VIX chart. Uh, volatility itself had a little bit more, was a little more range bound, shall we say, of the last 14 years. There's a couple of highs. Uh, one of them, I'll give you a hint, was this past February. That's close, but that is actually not the high, Mr. Rock Lobster. The highest data point is actually at another, and this again, this is just for volatility. This is not for anything specific beyond that. Uh, from 2004 to uh, present, if you had a guess, uh, I'll give you a hint. We were just talking about. I, it. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, at least at that point, then now that I now that I remember that we did actually have a financial meltdown, I would have to say volatility in the meltdown would be the 
as the you know what was that October 2008 so yes they, well done yeah. sir I ironically volatility also had this, a peak of interest right around February of 2004 I think that's probably when the uh, about 92 percent of the hype that's about pretty much when these when our modern incarnation of VIX was kind of coming into being then so uh Maybe that's what uh, what drove it. Uh, we have more data. We can keep going on that, but we want to we want to get rolling with some of the other fun stuff. Catching us out here, our old friend Vivix. Let's see what's going on today. They were about ninety three. Uh, coming into the show so still elevated but a little bit off of what it's been of late which has been around uh, 95 to 100 you know if you follow vvix which is the volatility of vix of course uh, it could get all over the place it usually has at least until recently it had a range of like 75 on the downside till about you know around around 100 it's been in the, in the 95 to 100 range for a little while now it has been spiking uh, also, it can spike well over 100, and you know when that happens, the last time it hit over 100 was back on May 29th, got to about 113 and a half. You know, things are afoot, things are interesting. VIX is moving, probably worth paying attention to uh, out there. The futures, looking at the VIX futures out here as well, we're seeing, like I said, the cash right around 1230. We're seeing about a point and change, about 1.1 handles between the cash and the front month future, and about nearly two, about 1.8 uh, with the second month future. So getting a little bit a little bit steeper out there. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye out there in terms of VIX futures term structure, or are you just too too obsessed with, uh, with the tinfoil hat stuff? Well, the, the tinfoil hat stuff, of course, is it's – it's um, it's easy to obsess about that just because I, you know, you you have seen liquidity squeezes before, right? You know what? Liquidity can drive volatility, or lack of liquidity can drive volatility up faster than just about anything. So, um, so I, I'll, I'll get off my tin for that. However, what I would say is the the remarkable speed of the compression yesterday in the futures and how that's all just coming out again. Um, so. I would say is, you know, because I have like, you know, the option pit secret volatility for value calculation for the VIX futures at any point in time. So um, and they're coming, what I would say, back into kind of a fair range. So which which makes, um, you know, like the long VXX put trade, some cool uh, put time spreads in VIX, stuff like that, where trades that set up really well that have great risk rewards are now once again, becoming fantastic. So um, that is, I, I saw that flatten yesterday and I'm like, God damn, I got awfully flat for not a lot of news. Um, so, and I, and I swear, I, I feel like it's like the algos are driving some of this stuff um, and they just, they, they move things so quickly um, in this all electronic market world. On, I think in now, right now, like the trade war stuff is the stuff that is lighting vol up really fast. So, if you're looking for, you know, at least short-term, uh, short-term trends or indications when vol's going to move, just just wait till they start bitching about trade again, and then um, you, you know things are going to move. But just as fast, uh, if there's no, like we've seen time and time again, you know, you have the position, the hard line, and then oh, okay, you know, we have some sort of trade deal for some dollars, um, the vol comes right out again. So, if anything, it's like really, really short term for how how quickly that's what I will I will say is for how quickly the the cash moves to the future and how fast SPX vol is reacting. Um, considering kind of how light the news is, it feels like they're reacting just in a in a split second. But those futures just are ultimately the future trader guys are probably the smarter you know because. They already build a. They already build a premium in the in their futures. They're already, they've already got a couple bucks worth of premium out to July. So they don't have to be as sensitive as the VIX cash or the SPX, you know, option guys do. So it's all related. But um, I just I was surprised by how much that curve um, got absorbed yesterday, and and just as I guess I don't even want to say not surprised is how fast. Um, that future is coming back today. So I would expect the VIX cash would start to leak. If it doesn't leak into the close, it should leak uh, pretty hard on Monday. Um, so that's, that would be my, um, that would be my observation without a tinfoil hat, just looking at uh, straight, uh, straight analysis of all that time. Well, we know the VIX futures traders are pretty savvy, right? Cause we know one of them manufactured the short squeeze of a lifetime. So uh, one of them out there, one of them out there is pretty savvy. 
good at uh, good at playing uh, the old market like a fiddle. Let's move on to VIX options land. What was going on in VIX options? Uh, another relatively quiet week. A couple of active days uh, in there. ADB hovering right around 535,000 right now, which is slightly light. Usually it's around a little bit north of 600,000. But again, we're coming into uh, summertime. Usually that's a seasonal low point for vol, or excuse me, vol and volume, both of them <laughs> over here. So that's probably another thing playing into the numbers we're seeing uh, today. Pretty light, just a little bit shy of 200,000 contracts on the tape. As of about 12.30 p.m. Central here, about 2.6 to 1 calls over puts in terms of today's volume. Uh, the rest of the week, again, hovering a couple of times right around that ADB, about 5.63 yesterday. 5.81, the highlight of the week on Wednesday. 4.34 on Tuesday and 329,000 on Monday. Overall, open interest that call to put hovering right around 2.7. So kind of pretty close to about unched from where it was uh, last week. Nothing crazy to write home about. We're going to need some sort of some sort of development, major development in, in Vixland, I think, to really to really take that up a notch back to the the four or north where people really start paying attention to. In terms of what people were paying attention this week when it came to to the hot Vic strikes, the big Vic action, the numbered the number one VIX, the top 10, I really should say, VIX strikes in terms of what people actually have on out there in VIX land. Where is all the volume in VIX land? Well, we'll find out. Uh, number one out here this way. I probably should do it in reverse order, but uh, I always do it top one. Start with one, so we'll just do it that way. No teasers on the list. We give you all the data up front. Uh, number one with the bullet this week, yet again, the June 20s with about 266,000 contracts. That, again, shows you kind of how light the OI is right now because usually... Number one on our list will be north of 400,000 contracts, 500, 600,000 maybe. Uh, this week, just about a little over a quarter million. So uh, things are a little bit light out there. Number two, our first put on the list, the June 15 puts, about a buck 98 uh, open on that strike. Number three, the June 30s, the ever optimistic June 30s, 178,000. That 30 strike don't, won't, won't go away. People persist in playing on the 30 strike. You'll see it again later here on this list several times. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, the 30s continue to be where some action is. Number four, the June 21s, a buck 60 open out there. Number five, our second put on the list, 158,000 open of the June 13 puts. 15 and 13 puts tend to be the, the put strikes du jour. Everyone loves those bad boys and loads up on those uh, whenever we get some put paloozas going on. Number six, the June 25s, 146,000 open there. Number seven, our final put on the list, the June, oh, excuse me, July. Our first July put on the list, a July 14 puts 144,000 open there. Someone splitting the difference, deciding July wasn't the 13 or 15 strike they wanted to go in the middle with the 14s to the tune of 144,000. Number eight, the July 30s. Remember I said you see the 30s again. Uh, 143,000 open there. Number nine, right hot on his heels, the June 27th. Also quite optimistic, 142,000 open there. Rounding out the top 10, uh, we got 140,000 of the June 15 calls out there comparatively modest june 15 calls uh, compared to some of these other strikes we're seeing here total just shy of 8 million contracts open about seven about about 8 million uh, about 5.8 on the calls and about 2.2 million on the puts uh in terms of vix options activity mr rock lobster anything uh, coming across your tape out there in uh in the land of the pit that was of interest in terms of vix options slinging this week uh, the only thing we were looking at is just some of those downside puts. If because um, we had that quick lift in VIX cash, if there's been a little bit of action again, and let's say the 13 puts, 14 puts, stuff like that, um, for those that might have been looking for a, a quick reversion trade. Um, other than that, um, nothing, you know, nothing, you know, super out of the ordinary. It looks like though. Um, oh my gosh, is. Is this the big trader guy back in here doing his massive roll again? Um, I'm just looking at some of these strikes saying these are some uh, – they're looking for some big numbers, <laughs> some big numbers out of these things. But um, uh, at least for us, that's all I was really looking at as far as um, uh, at least downside VIX options. You know, when you when you, you print that really low VIX and then you have this, like the short-term pop, sometimes that that – those downside puts in VIX become interesting again because you get a little bit of a window into uh, the trade on them. Yeah, speaking of windows into trades, one of the trades that uh, we've saw a lot in, in VIX options land for quite some time was the 
the VIX one by two ratio, the short one by two. So sell one by two on the call side. Uh, usually around a near out of the money call, you sell one of somewhere in that range. Sometimes at the money if you're feeling if you're feeling uh, really 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 nervy to add the money, but usually you see it slightly out of the money and then you buy too farther out of the money. It was a very popular trade, kind of went away. We discussed it uh, on the show uh, last week again in terms of why it's not really that popular, but maybe we spoke too soon uh, because the big trade of the day today is indeed one of those. Not quite as sizable as we're used to seeing and not quite the same setup, uh, Mr. Rocklop. So like I said, usually we see these, you know, with, with VIX somewhere in the low teens, we'd see, you know, the calls somewhere in the mid to higher teens, and maybe they're buying uh, the, the two in the low 20s. What we saw today was uh, someone selling about 6,000 of the July 23s, so pretty far up there, and then turning around and buying two of the, a little more than two, actually, of the June, of the June 24s. So they're doing a bit of a, uh, a time... Very tight, much tighter than we usually see. Uh, one by two, kind of the other way. So I don't know. This this is uh, this one kind of struck me as odd. We don't see it done usually in a time fashion, Mister Rock Lobster. We don't usually see it done that far out of the money, and we don't usually see it done that tight. Uh, so what are your thoughts on uh, this this kind of flavor of the old VIX one by two? Um, okay, so knowing how the VIX term structure works when vol blows up right so i understand that part so they're buying the they're buying the 24s my question is and so i get that on the june they're going to buy that because that part blows up first however what good does selling them the 23s do them at all in this position like <laughs> exactly. those 20 those julys are never going to decay so it's that that's a that is truly a head scratcher. See, if they would have just taken VIX made easy, they could have saved themselves 20, 45 cents, 5,700 times. On that <laughs> they're going to be like, you're going to get to June, like, wow, these calls really haven't moved very much. So, I mean, it will decay a little bit and help a very, very small amount. But for, uh, anyway, for the amount of money you have to give away, um, if you do get any kind of a pop in vol, but I mean, the only thing I will say in the defense of this position is they're buying, the, you know, the jumpier side of the curve, you know, the right way. They're buying the, the shorter term stuff. But, you know, why bother selling the July at all? You, you would do better just buying some in the money puts in, in VIX um, than selling those July 23s. <laughs> so. Yeah, this one struck me as odd for, for many, many reasons. Structurally, it's one of the odder one by twos we've seen <laughs> in VIX land, which is why uh, why it was worth uh, worth discussing here. Yeah, we don't, you know, again, people are trying to find. I get it. You're trying to find ways to make uh, the one by two work in this environment. It's not it's not exactly the most favorable environment. It's getting there, but it's not quite the most uh, super environment. I mean, the VIX is low. I get that. You want that, but a couple other things. In fact, I think we have a listener question about this a little bit later. Need to kick in before the one by two. I think becomes back roaring back into favor. I don't know if this is going to be. The, the structure everyone adopts going forward. But interesting nonetheless. Also saw a lot of VIX call of this uh, week, particularly yesterday. The big trade of the day yesterday was the AUG uh, 30s. Again, the 30 strike is where the love is. 52,000, someone coming in and just scooping those bad boys for, looks like, 42 cents right off the offer there, pretty much. Uh, so uh, big upside. Also, June 15s getting some love, buying 20,000 of those, about 50 cents. So. Upside and very, very near-term upside still uh, still uh, in fashion. But the 30s, people persist on those 30 strikes. And uh, not sure uh, not sure why. I also saw 1x2s uh, in the other direction, Mr. Rock. So I guess maybe it's unfair of me to say 1x2s are not back. They are back. They're just kind of funky and a little bit different than we're used to seeing. <clears throat> in particular, put 1x2s. We talked about these a few times before. They're not usually the big trade in VIX land. Uh, looks like we saw a put 1x2 on Wednesday, Mr. Rock Lobster, to the tune of the, it was June. It was a June 13 half, uh, 12 half, put 1x2, done 14,400 by 28,800 times. Uh, looks like, again, the executions are kind of, uh, you know, they're kind of kind of funky, uh, as they always are in VIX land. So it's kind of hard to intuit. It looks like I'm going to go out on a limb, Mr. Rock Lobster, and say they probably sold. Uh, excuse me, they bought this spread, uh, bought one, and then uh, sold two. 
uh, if they did that, indeed, it looks like they did it for about looks like about about a fourteen cent uh, debit over here. Uh, what are your thoughts, Sarah? Maybe you differ. Maybe you disagree, Mr. Rock Lobster. Putting the tinfoil hat on, you're going to say I disagree vehemently. Uh, and in general, what are your thoughts on a, on a one by two? I know you just mentioned you know better off buying the June puts. What about instead perhaps buying a sizable June one handle one by two put spread? Well, the price is not bad. It's not a credit, but it's also it's um, it's an in the money spread. It's a lot of VIX is kind of okay. I'm going to sort of nail where the vol lands. I mean, I it to me it looks like a pretty low risk trade. You know, eleven and a half. I think given the conditions is pretty tough, but possible for June. Um, so that they're breaking even down to what say eleven and a half or something like that. So I think you're right about. From a you know, how many customers are going to sell buy two and sell one for a debit at the twelve and a half strike? You would that that is a big uh, that's a big road to hoe because how do you make money on that when you do it for yeah a debit, that that right? would be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd, you'd have to go to ten, I think, or I have to do the arithmetic, but at least it's it's quite a bit lower than eleven and a half before you start ringing the cash register. So, That's a guy who's buying what you were selling earlier about this Trump summit being a big love fest. If he's doing that, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's like, we're going to nine. So. But, you know, that's all of that certainly is possible. 11 is possible. This is really looking kind of status quo, right, where we, you know, we trade 11 and a half and then you have a tweet or you have a trade war thing and we're trading 13 and a half again in a second. So but you're this type of trade. If you put on this one by two, even for a small debit, how long do you think you're waiting to cash the paycheck on this? You think you're going to cash the paycheck tomorrow? No. Next day? No. Uh, how about the week of June expiration? You might have a shot. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, uh, anyway. So, um, yeah, maybe the one by two is back just in it, all sorts of be. weird. I, I like them for credits. I think they're decent trades for credits, and you're kind of, yeah, you're kind of dialing the low end of VIX. Um, but this one, this one could work, uh, certainly could work. But, you know, you're, you're waiting a long damn time. Uh, to collect, I don't think I don't think the puts are juicy enough here to get a, a credit. You got to go pretty crazy to get a, a credit. Yep. He's already going pretty tight. He's only got one handle here, so uh, that would be funny. You're right. If he had it the other way around, <laughs> he's just he's long too on the downside. He's like, we're just going to the toilet, and uh, nothing is happening, and it's not happening immediately. <laughs> so uh, that would be a interesting one. Speaking of interesting, we talked about this I think on Bobby's. I'm not sure if, if you had a chance to weigh on this one, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster. Our old friend VXX, uh, everyone's favorite, or shall I say, least favorite way sometimes to play ball. But hey, as you've you've called it, predictably crappy. That's kind of what it is. It's being predictably crappy today, coming off a bit, quite a bit, actually unched right now after having uh, kind of rallied earlier in the day, up about a handle, and then now uh, it looks like it's starting to sell off a little bit as the VIX futures continue to come under pressure in this weird kind of meandering kind of day we're having here. Uh, got a low, actually, it's 32 half in VIX cash. So it was actually down a little bit on the day. So that erosion continuing to kick in. Uh, we always talk about erosion, Mr. Rock Lobster. What are your thoughts? Do you see this big print that went up last week? Uh, this crazy July 70, 90 vertical. I think someone paid uh, 20 odd cents or 30 odd cents for this thing. You see that go up last week? No, I did not. That is, uh, that is very, very, um, let's just call it enticing. Let's, why don't we discuss it on the show? <laughs> yeah, we talked about it last <laughs> week. I, I have the, I have it. People actually wrote in about it, so I'm sure we'll have listener questions about it. So maybe I should probably save it for the listener mail next. We do have a listener question. So I will do okay. such a thing. I will save it for the listener mail because we have listener questions about that. But, yeah, it was, um, uh, shall we say, a funky one. Uh, also, it looks like we got uh, the other side of that going up today. We got uh, a, a, yesterday a June call vertical. Someone decided maybe buying a July out-of-the-money call vertical wasn't a thing to do. So we'll turn around and sell the June vertical. The June 3540 going up looks like for about 41 cents. Paper selling that 5,000 times. Done. Tied to the underlying. It was a buy right there. Uh, so worth noting there is a underlying component to that. Uh, but still, someone perhaps being inspired by last week's paper and saying, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go a lot shorter. And selling that 3540. We'll see how that bad boy works out. Speaking of those bad boys and that trade, we should just get to it. Get to a little bit of the old volatility voicemail. <laughs> It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. 
Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com. Sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com. Right. Or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options. Or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol voicemail. It's uh, a, lot of, a lot of interesting stuff going on. A lot of you guys are clearly uh, inspired by our, our conversation from last week about that spread. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, by the way, pay off our poll from last week. We asked you guys, uh, what do you think, which product of these think has the highest 30-day implied vol? I know with Bitcoin, it's a little bit challenging to say implied because you really kind of mostly talk and realize, but we'll... We'll lump it all together. We gave you four choices, Tesla, VIX, Bitcoin, or the Russell 2000. It was a tight race. 35% of you ended up coming in, choosing Bitcoin. Hot on his heels, Tesla. I think Tesla's reputation for volatility maybe uh, preceded itself there. Uh, 34% for Tesla, only 21% for VIX, 10% for Russell. And it pretty much was VIX that was the answer. We just told you VIX was, is in the low 90s right now. That 30-day vol is right around that level uh, as well. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, kind of depending on where you're looking, has spiked up to over 100, but it tends to average a lot less than that. So uh, Bitcoin is going to be kind of number two in that race. And then... Uh, Number three would have been Tesla was right around, I think, a 40 or so, 43. And then number four would have been Russell with RBX right around, I think, a 14, 15 right now. Uh, so, yeah, kind of in that order, listeners. But I can see how you might think Bitcoin would be on top. Tesla, though, I think its, uh, it's reputation for vol uh, may have misled you. That's why we put it in there. A little bit of a trick question last week. We'll get to another question here, Mr. Rock Lobster, is what I was talking about. Comes from Lisag, Lisa G, maybe. Says, I'm confused. I'm with you, Lisa. She says, I'm confused. Why would someone buy such an outlandish vertical in a product that essentially rots to zero? Mr. Rock Lobster, you said you missed it. We talked about this a little bit on the show last week. It was kind of eye-popping. Uh, we always talk, what, in VXX? You talk erosion, right? And we debated it endlessly. What drives it? What causes it? How much does it happen? When does it happen? All Reverse splits, all this stuff. We very rarely talk the other side, which is uh, the upside of of VXX. And that's exactly what someone wanted last week to the tune of it was a July 7090 call spread, Mr. Rock Lobster, going up 73,474 times. Uh, looks like they did it for, oh yeah, 31 cents here, 32 cents. <laughs> uh, so someone bought that 73,000 times for 32 cents. So M Mr. Rock Lobster, Liz, Lisa, I'm sorry, Lisa here is confused. I'm sure you're confused. Everyone's confused. Why do you think someone would buy such an outlandish vertical? Oh, my word. Um, well, what I learned early on is sometimes people do stuff like that because they sell something else for even a more outlandish price. Um, you never know exactly what trades over the counter or hidden in the, uh, the dark sphere of uh, Wall Street trading desks. But it's possible that somebody was buying that call spread because they just wanted to manage some risk somewhere else that they, you know, sold, they sold another contract. So, you know, it's like George Soros is, to, to, you know, I thought he was uh, predicting the decline of a recession or depression or something like that. So maybe he's just buying tons of upside juice and they needed to hedge it somehow. I don't, you never know exactly what or why. Um, but I, and I, you know, one of my friends, uh, Dave, uh, you, you, uh, he interviewed you a couple of uh, months ago or a month ago. The, and I've just been listening to um, guys in his chat room or in his on his Facebook page. It's a really good Facebook page for information. But, you know, a lot of people are trading products. They just have no understanding of it all, what makes them, how they price, what makes them work. Um, and it's, you know, uh, surprising. Um, it does not surprise me either that somebody's just spent, you know, 30 something cents on 73,000 times on something that's effectively <laughs> worthless. But if you sell, you know, a July 60 call for two and a half bucks, you, you might need some protection somehow. So, or you, you want, might need something to lower risk. So it's usually stuff like this when it trades, um, you know, the 60 calls are trading for, well, they're only trading for 45 cents. So, this is a uh, let's just call it a bit of a head scratcher how it went up, um, but there you have it. So I I think that 
could be a reason. Um, like we laugh at, you know, on the other show, people buying the Tesla puts. It's because maybe, maybe they need to buy those puts because they're selling uh, protection on Tesla bonds for a lot more money. Um, and I usually that's why it is a lot of some over the counter stuff is laid off in a um, in a listed market. Um, also, it helps mark the value of a, a book, let's say, too, when you see a print like that. So um, there are several reasons. They might not all be for the reason that you think when you see the trade go up, though. Yeah, the kind of stuff you know, we said it. We said on the show last week, the stuff very rarely goes up in a vacuum. And this kind of thing certainly has has another. I would be willing to wager heavily that there is another leg. And as Ralph Hoffs alluded to, probably a much juicier leg. So much so that they're willing to spend, oh, what's it, about $2.3 million uh, on just the hedge to protect it. So they're probably sitting on some cash uh, if that is indeed uh, the case. But, yeah, they, we talk about the option side of this, but obviously there's usually quite often other components to it uh, that uh, can be quite juicy. Speaking of juicy, Mr. Rockhops, you said you were inspired by this uh, this. This vertical, you wanted to know more. It looks like our friend Cajun did too. Cajun says, I would sell that VXX July call spread all day long. In fact, I did. Thanks for giving me the idea on your last show. Keep up the ball of fun. So there we go. Creating uh, creating trade ideas for people all, all the time, Mr. Rock Lobster. Have you, have you been similarly inspired now? Um, I, I have not been similarly expired, inspired on that. Um, <laughs> um, I just... I. It's you get twenty two cents and you have twenty dollars of risk, which even after seeing the last ball apocalypse, it's it's tough to get up there. But um, um thirty two cents, it, guy, thirty two cents. Don't don't you don't you be smirch a dime here. Exactly thirty two cents. Sorry, or actually, it's yeah, it is. Oh yeah, they do get thirty two cents. So, um, I just you know I think there are other ways to make money. Are they probably going to make money on that trade? Yeah, but I mean, it only decays about a penny a week or something. So it's, it's just like one of those things. It's, it seems like a lot of risk to hold. To you know, you're waiting a long time for your dollar on that. Yes, yes, you are. But uh, it is, uh, it's enticing at least to our friend here, Cajun. Uh, yes, interesting. I'm with you. It's kind of uh, kind of crazy. You get twenty dollars worth of risk, but it is a uh, it is an enticing thirty two cents. <laughs> nice of our friend there to bid up all that juicy ball for all of you up there who want to play in that uh, in that VXX call upside in July. Our friend here coming in and bidding it up for you. How nice of him to do such a thing. All right, let's see here. Uh, we got a uh, so many. Um, Deville. Deville wants to know. Great show. Thanks, Deville. How do I get my volatility fund profiled on volatility views? Um, well, you took the first right step. You hit us up. Hit up our producers. Tell us what the heck you got going on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we don't really do. We don't like profile funds. We'll have guests on from a variety of different funds, and we will talk about what they do and what they trade, and then also get their views on the market and things like that. So if you want to participate in that. Uh, reach out, hit us up, tell us what the heck you got going on. We'll take a look and see if that's a fit for our show. Uh, but, uh, you know, otherwise, good luck <laughs> with, uh, with uh, the, vol, the, vol, uh, the Vol Fund. Uh, here's an interesting one, Mr. Mr. Rocklops. This is kind of uh, very timely. F, F, News, F News 2 says, uh, do you think that eliminating the traditional earnings call would be a bad move for Vol traders? I kind of take the view that it would smooth things out and make it a little less likely to get run over. Am I crazy? I don't know if you heard about this, Mr. Rock Lobster, but uh, your old pal, Mr. Buffett and friends were, were, were talking a lot yesterday about they think this time for that traditional quarterly earnings guidance and call to kind of go away. They think it's an archaic relic and it makes uh, companies too focused on the short term rather than the long term benefits of the uh, of the of the company. And of course, that that brought a good discussion on option block about what that means for a lot more short term people like people in the options audience. I'm curious if you a, if you've heard of this and b. Uh, what are your thoughts in general? And then C, as F News 2 asks, do you think if they do go through with that, if that's a, that a bad thing for folks of our ilk? Um, well, I mean, not having the earnings play means there's no earnings vol anymore. So that is pretty much what it means. That is pretty much what it means. Is it is it better for companies? So one thing about here's my so. Let's say a company's really not doing that great or whatever, so they just don't say anything to anybody for a long time. And they just, you know, they create that dark 
Um, <laughs> like, okay. And all of a sudden you're like, Oh, everything stinks. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, you know, it's hard to disagree with Warren Buffett cause he's, you know, pretty smart and right all the time. So, um, as far as the short term earnings call goes, I think too is, you know, it forces companies to disclose stuff to investors. And I think human nature is more, you know, I think Warren Buffett is kind of the folksy, you know, oh, human nature, human nature. It was a guy that's actually done pretty well um, <laughs> profiting from human nature. But I think the tendency for human nature is to, um, to give as little as possible, especially on a corporate end. So I think having the earnings disclosure kind of makes them, you know, kind of keeps their feet to the fire. So, uh, you know, I, I think if you're a CFO and you're making, you know, four million bucks a year, you can do a quarterly earnings call. You know, what the heck? Earn your paycheck, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely some diverging views on this. There's that view, which I've heard is, you know, expressed a lot, that it does increase the transparency you get to see, keeps them a little bit more accountable, which I understand. I also understand Buffett's view. Buffett obviously plays the long game. And he likes companies to have a much longer time horizon in their planning, five or 10 years, and to do what's structurally better, invest in R&D and things like that. And I can also see the argument that the way Wall Street is currently set up kind of disincentivizes that. If you pull, pile in a bunch of R&D now, well, that's an expense. We're going to hit you. You know, whereas if you slash your workforce, oh, you're cutting an expense. Yay for you, even though that could long term be uh, very detrimental to the business. There's a lot of things that are wrong with the current model. Uh, which I, th I could see people wanting to change. But, of course, uh, selfishly for our what we do here, we like a little bit of earnings vol, so that would probably be a sad day for us. But still, if it happened in the long term, if that worked out better for companies you know, in the long term, that would be a good. This vol would come out in other ways. We'll find it, but we won't have those, those binary events. It might just be surprise announcements everywhere. Oh, no, we're slashing everything. Oh, no, we're doing great, uh, which would probably be much more volatile in the long run. So I, I, it's, it's not a lot of data in terms of how this, you know, obviously it's never happened, so it'd be more theoretical. There was a little bit we talked, I think, I think it was a McKinsey study talking about the impact of earnings calls on volatility. That's kind of been it. Uh, earnings is a weird mix back anyway. We've talked about it before, about how earnings season is kind of counterintuitive. You think it would maybe, each of those binary points is kind of volatile, but in aggregate, they actually tend to tamp down volatility. So maybe if we got rid of all that, maybe it would make things a little more volatile. Who knows? All sorts of weirdness. It's a good thought question. But we got to keep on rolling. Speaking of questions, it's time for us to ask the most meaningful question of all. Where will VIX be next week? It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, Mr. Rock Lobster. I had a good run there. I had a good run there of a couple of weeks where I was dead on bullseye. Pretty darn good. And then Mr. You know, Blind Squirrel finds a nut. The Greasy Meatball got me by a, few, by a few decimal points last week. So I allowed him to go first. And even though I really wanted to be around a 12 half, 1260 range, he went there. He went 12 half. So I had to go north. I had to go 12.95. And lo, lo and behold, where are we at the end of the show here? Right around 12 and a quarter. So unfortunately, Mr. Meatball gets another one. So at least he gets a couple. You know, Blind Squirrel's got to find a nut every now and then. I'm not saying I'm angry with that development in the broad. In the broad macro sense, I am quite happy. But uh, in the terms of the show prognostication, I would have liked a little bit more, at least for the end of the show. All that a long way around is saying, Mr. Rock Lobster, I shall give you pride of place to go first in your, in your compatriot stead, sir. What say you for next week? Whither shall Vix Cash be this time next week? I'm going to go um, looking just at the calendar. I'm going to go 11.55. Ooh, you're feeling, you're feeling the erosion, huh? You're feeling I it. I like that. I would not uh, be averse to that either. Uh, you know, it's an interesting one where, again, I'm feeling lower. I don't know if I'm feeling that much lower. I want to give you a little bit of room to, to breathe down there. Though. I can't just come on you. Well, I could be a jerk and be like, you know, 1165. I shan't do such a thing, which puts me in the quandary I was in last week. That's why I like to go first. Uh, so I shall indeed go a little bit north of you where you're saying. A little bit south of where we are today, but a little bit north of the Rock Lobster. I'm going to say 11. 85 is a nice good range. So get a nice little bit of juice in there, but you never know, some things could pop up. Of course, if our one by two friend is, has it on the other way to the downside, the puts, we're all going to be trading nine uh, <laughs> this time next week. So uh, fascinating stuff could unfold any second. Unfortunately, that's not the case for us, listeners, because the only thing unfolding for us right now, at least, is the end of this show. If you're listening live, stay tuned. We shall be back soon 
about about 30 minutes for Twifo. Got a good one coming up. You guys liked our deep dives into ag volatility and all that kind of fun stuff. We're going to be doing that again uh, with uh, with Optiver and a few others. We'll be talking equity vol with Russell. We'll be talking crude vol, gold, all sorts of good stuff. Maybe a little crypto, spoiler. Uh, we'll get into that as well. So uh, stay tuned in about 30 minutes for a little bit more of Twifo. If you're listening on the podcast, well, you got it already in your device of choice. So don't worry about it. Just tune in and enjoy. Uh, and before we go, Mr. Rock Lobster, I know you guys are working hard on the uh, on the Asian Options Made Easy series. When shall we see it, sir? Right after next week. Um, <laughs> no, we're, I'm going to be in Chicago for our, our Pro Trader Summit. Uh, all of you that are interested, uh, there might be a spot or two left, uh, maybe on a Thursday or Friday. And I think we're doing the show live, and it'll be fun. Oh, that's right. Yes, I will be seeing you next week. I'll be in town. Uh, Ironically, you're coming to town, and I'm leaving. But I'll be around on Wednesday, so I will see you then I believe we're doing a show on Wednesday. Maybe we'll do kind of a, a hybrid option block kind of ball views combo. What do you think? That sounds, I think that would be, uh, that would be great. Um, so anyway, the vol newsletter is still moving along nicely for all that want to learn vol. Come out over to Option Pit and actually learn how these products work. Um, so uh, good, a good opportunity to learn about volatility. All right, sir. Thank you for joining me today. And thanks to all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading, streaming, and subscribing to the show. And, of course, for joining us live. We love you guys, too. If you're listening in the chat, make sure. Go get a beverage. Take a bathroom break. Take a rest. And then come back fired up and ready in about 27 minutes. Clock's ticking. To talk all things Twifo. Otherwise, we'll see you next week for more Volatility Views. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 